hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another pro to the commentary done by Luminous, and today I'm casting DK vs. Mythtrust, and this is part of Join Dota's Masters Tournament. Yes, DK playing Dota 2, I'm very excited. Unfortunately, this was an AP remake, so we're not going to have to pick and ban, uh, but I'll just talk about the hero synergy once they pick all the hero. So big shout out to Join Dota for hosting this tournament and also allowing me to uh, cast from the replay. DK was a team that gave me the replay, so shout out to them as well. If you guys want to know more about Join Dota's Masters Tournament, definitely go to joindota.com and check it out. DK on the Radiant side, Mythtrust on the Dire. And if you guys remember Mythtrust's epic performance against Orange, if you haven't watched the game, definitely go watch it. Uh, one of the best game of Dota of all time. Uh, but yeah, in that game, they played a Batrider, they played a Ancient Apparition, and yes, Labat played a Batrider, TNK played an Ancient Apparition. So just from that game alone, we, we know we're going to be expecting something crazy, crazy good. We have uh, Lanu, Lanu on the Puck, LR5R5 on the Ventral Spirit, and of course, the carry player, Lakels, going to be playing the Dragonite. I'm, I'm just very curious how we actually went to this Viper pick. Not having a CMO in that regard kind of sucks. Let's talk about Mythtrust's lineup here a bit. Myth Trust definitely going for a very, very strong mid game lineup. Blink Dagger is going to be rushed on the Bat Rider because that is the best playing style. Generally, some Bat Rider like to go Vanguard first, some like to go Trits first. He, he just go Rush Blink because he kind of, that's how Myth Trust plays. They do a lot of Blink Smoke Ganks after that uh, Bat Rider picks up Blink. So uh, he's going to be trying to go for as soon as possible. Puck is going to give them some early or mid game initiation as well. So the initiation power of Myth Trust is ab absolutely strong like they have dream core that flaming lasso they have a swap and then they're gonna set them up to from some some strong team fight speaking of team fight we have tnk with the ancient apparition ice blast so that's gonna hurt quite a bit and the kells is gonna be going for some uh some dragon form so dragon form decides depends if he levels it up uh could be going for some some crazy uh mid game push with that elder form level one or if you want to go for team fight you could actually level up the fire form and that could do something as well Let's look at what rating is at. DK, you know, Chinese team has that negative connotation of, you know, farm all day, but that's not the lineup they have here. They have a, quite a gank intensive lineup, but one of the other aspect, as we see, our TK might be a little bit trouble. One of the aspects that we do see uh, DK's lineup here is that they have a lot of lane presence. Crystal Maiden Shaker and uh, and once Beastmaster picks up his level 6, they have a lot of range. So in terms of engagement, they're not too bad and it comes to initiation as well. They have a lot of range that they could also work with. One cool thing about Broodmother's web choice is that you could see that he destroyed this web here and that's going to prevent a lot of ganks coming in uh, from the enemy supports. And meanwhile he's going to put a web here as well and that's basically one one sentry won't really screw him up because he has a lot of maneuver ground. And so we do have uh, TNK coming back in the mid lane which makes a little bit more sense. If you want to run a tri lane on the top, Bad Rider is not the person you do want to have a tri lane. I mean Bad Rider tri lane is okay but eh, definitely not the best. You know, we have a little bit of initiation on the mid lane, but yeah, uh, Kofi plus Dragon Tail is uh, pretty, like, four seconds of chains then. Just pretty good, pretty good. Uh, meanwhile, we have a kind of an alt lane here on the top, a Broodmother plus Shaker. Basically, the Shaker is going to be playing Stay Away, although he's not really staying away right now. He's going to use this feature to bail out his teammate when, whenever necessary, and hopefully he doesn't get caught off. He's trying to block off the enemy camp. But he is, he is, might be a little bit trouble right now. Ventures is going to find him right now. Here comes a Bad Rider. Bad Rider is only level 1. So they're not going to have a, a Firefly. And I think with that, he's going to be fine. Brumata comes around to get a spot shot off. And Shaker turns around. You can see that the, the la or excuse me, the Napalm just slowing down so much. And it looks like Super might actually go down 4 stack. And one more hit. He has 6 HP. And he's going to survive. Ventures Spirit gets a little creep ball. Takes up a, a Tower Creeper hit. And actually, I think RTK might get a kill here. Spawn Spiraling is going to pick up first blood, so that was not the best gank. And <laughs> whenever you try to gank a enemy support and you die yourself, yeah, not not too good. And especially if Bruma to pick that one, he's going to salve up. He's going to have to go for a boot speed if you want to play a little bit more defensive. If, if he feels safe enough, he's going to go for a magic stick. Shaker's going to go for a magic stick first as well. And basically, he's going to ask the Crystal Maiden to upgrade a crow instead because he needs magic stick against a link like this. Back on the mid lane here, Lone D is going to be handling the Beastmaster. Very standard choice that he's going to be going for the inner beast. You generally want to try to outpush your enemy lineup here. And having the extra aura to give your creeps a little bit more attack speed will be able to allow you to do so. But looks like the rune on the bot lane is going to get scouted by Lunu and he is going to pick it up. On the bot lane, it's going to be a Puck versus a, uh, a Crystal Maiden versus, and, and, a, and a Viper. So a solo Puck versus CM and 
and Viper. And if this is a game, if you ever wonder what a farming Viper would do for a team, well, we're going to have a chance to glimpse it. Because uh, Burning, one of the best farming player of all of Dota. Like, no joke. He is probably one of the best farmer ever. And that's one of the best farmer player plus Nether Toxin is absolutely no joke. We're two and a half, three minutes in. 15 and 10. I mean, three minutes we have, you know, eight minute wave. So we have 18 creeps. And he's going to have 17 last hits after this one. So he, he missed one last hit. That's that's kind of what 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 of the caliber that we're looking in. Looks like uh, these two guys duking it out. I don't think Crystal Maiden's gonna die, although she is only level one and she does not have mana uh, until much later. And Puck's gonna go for a little bit of uh, chase. I don't think I think he's really wasting his time. Although if you think about it, what is he really gonna do in the lane against a Viper and a Crystal Maiden uh, with Nether? Or excuse me, with the Poison attack, he could easily usher Puck away from the lane. And Puck using his time to check runes to chase away Crystal Maiden. Not the worst use of his time, I suppose. It's definitely better than tower hugging. Yeah, burning's gonna last like like crazy. And and this top lane, they gotta get some ganks off against this Broodmender. It's definitely gonna be hard, although having a lot of stuns uh, will allow you to do so. It looks like TNK has actually journeyed back to the top lane, but again, it's gonna be hard as long as Super plays stay away, which he is doing now. They're really not going to get any ganks off. Yeah, they're going to just back off now. And definitely uh, Myth Trust, the two supports, are getting, really getting hammered down. I guess a positive outlook for this is, uh, well, Labat is going to be farming like crazy. And he is going to be going for a Blink Dagger rush immediately after a Boots of Speed. That's, again, that's how Labat plays his bat. And that's what I expect from this game. They definitely need, I mean, against against the Chinese, who generally has very good war control and positioning, you kind of need some smoke Blink ganks. And that's exactly how Myth Trust likes to play their game. So, actually a very, very... Happy to see how this uh, the, the clash of two playstyle is gonna work out. Both teams going for a little bit of bottle curling. Lone DD gonna hit level six very very soon. We are gonna see eventual spirit is gonna come around. No dragon tail to initiate. That might have been a little bit of miscommunication because with the two chains that they might have disadvantage damage. A level one crystal maiden coming around here definitely not gonna help out too much. And. Uh, you know the tree has respawned back. Always a little bit annoying when you play against uh, when you're playing brood and you have the, you use the web specifically to destroy the trees and the trees respawn and you're like oh damn. It's all good though. The the web have such low cooldown you could kind of use it again just to destroy the trees. Nice bright grow by T uh, by oh looks like they're gonna make a go on the bat. I don't think they could actually make it work. Uh, he does have boots of speed. He's gonna tango up. Looks like they're gonna try to go for it. But here comes a gank the other way. We are gonna have TNK dropping off a Kofi. And I don't think he's going to die. If he actually gets stunned under the tower, that might be very dangerous. Oh, ROTK, you might be in trouble. Fissure's going to get dropped, used defensively. It looks like Ventral Spirit's going to come around. They are definitely going to get a kill on Shaker, especially if TNK swings around. We'll see. Shaker definitely does not know that he's going to get ganked upon. Oh, that ward. He should have saw it coming. And Super is going to go down. Yeah, Rue. Uh, not, not too good. Not too good. Back in the mid lane here. Dragonite does have level 6, unfortunately no mana to use it. Puck is going to come around for a little bit of backstabbing. You can see Lakes initiating right now. He's going to drop off a Dragon Tail. Here comes Puck right now. But Puck's going to get roared. Yeah, Puck gets roared. Barely had the mana to do so here. And it looks like Lonely is going to pick up a kill. Lakes not going to be enough to bring that one down. And it looks like Lakes is going to be going for Treads first and a Magic Bottle. A lot of uh, item on this Crow here. Two kills going on. Uh, for DK, they kind of lucked out on some of these kills, especially that early kill being picked up by the Broodmother, this, this Beastmaster uh, picking up the kill here, definitely surviving on very low HP. We do have Smoke and Seat being picked up here by uh, Lone Didi. Let's see if it's going to be using it to gank. Running with the pack. And I'm back, had to AFK a little bit, although that wouldn't matter since uh, that is going to get paused. Lone Didi's got to get careful. Whoa. I'm not too sure what Lone DD was thinking about, although now he's gonna have like 30 seconds to think about it when he's dead. Kind of a rare out of position play from Lone DD. Burning just buying something right now is gonna be Hannah Midas, so yeah. Gonna reiterate my point that if you ever wonder what a farming Viper is gonna do for you, we're gonna see in this game. Uh, and I say it a little bit sarcastically because generally in a pub level game, in a very low level play, Farming Viper is probably one of the worst things you want to have because Viper is a quite a momentum hero. And uh, you want, as we see, Gank here, Flaming Lasso, Magic Missile, very easy kill against ROTK. 
Uh, Viper is a very momentum based hero. He gets a lot of his momentum by getting kills on enemy heroes, keeping them low level and get a level advantage. Once you hit level 11, uh, well, once you hit level 5, you kill people. But once you hit level 11, you have some good corrosive skin level down. You have some, you know, you have some nice damage from Nether Toxin. You orb bark like crazy. That is the time where you can kind of out tank the enemy support. That's the time where you kind of chase down enemy support. You have probably better boots and whatnot. And all of that comes from the fact that you are killing people, getting a lot of level, and out leveling them. And because of that, you want to participate in a lot of ganks. You'd like to go for a lot of kills and not necessarily so much farm. So a lot of times in, in lower level games, you don't see Viper farming, AFK rising. But it is burning. This is part of, your, part of their strategy. So we'll see where this carries us. Uh, I guess it could work if you're getting like a billion creeps, which I'm sure burning is getting a billion creeps. 54 and 31. Okay, 8 minutes in, there is... Five, 8 times 8 is 64. There's 64 creep kills and he's got 55 of it. And he's got 31 denies. J just saying. I mean, he's literally getting almost every creep in the lane. It looks like uh, he's going to get ganked. A couple of... Oh, Fissure. Not even hitting them, but uh, that's going to let Lone Didi pick up the kill. And I think they're going to get the tower as a result. And if Burnley lasts its tower, oh, that's going to be... It's going to be nasty. And I guess, in this case, Hannah Mina is not a bad pushing item, if you will, because he could blow up a creep instantly. Although, I guess Fissure plus Axis uh, blow up a wave instantly, so that's that's not too bad. Glyph gets used, I don't think that's going to matter too much. They're going to right-click this down. Although, there is, there's no Siege unit here, so it might take a while. But now, nah, it looks like Burning's going to last it this one. Let's see. Yeah, he's going to get the last hit, and that's that's not going to be too good. Mion Lequette's trying to do the same thing on the mid lane, not nearly having the similar success crystal maiden picks up nova at level two looks like she is going to be maxing nova very standard build for crystal maiden nowadays keeping that aura at one and seems like myth trust is going to be doing a, a very standard move you allow the allow the ancient operation to level up a little bit here although he's got to be very careful because brumado can outright kill you uh, and and try to allow him to pick up that level six so he can actually participate in ganks with this ancient aberration and ice blast. I wonder what how that bad is. He is going to be saving for the blink dagger first, as expected. And I wonder if they're going to go for some smoke gank again. Myth trust. Whenever they kind of get stuck, uh, you know, if you see enemy carry becoming real strong and you can't really gank him because the enemy team has good co war coverage, you go for the smoke ganks. Uh, no smoke up on anyone just yet. Let's quickly check out here. No, there is a smoke on Ventral Spirit. It looks like they are going to be popping it together right here. A little bit of go, uh, go advantage for the Radiant Zyx. As expected, they did push down one tower. And of course, bur er, Burning is, you know, <laughs> making up a lot of ground. And it looks like we're going to see a three-man gank on this bot lane. A little bit of visual bug. Doesn't seem like they're smoke, but they're definitely smoke. As you can see, the icon right here. Ooh, Shaker comes around, and that's... That that was a poor play by, I guess that was more or less a reactionary play. And Illusions definitely does not break smoke. You see that he do, still does have a smoke. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast is gonna hit, and it looks like the new he doesn't have enough. Ooh, that was that, oh my god, that's cl oh wow, he was in the middle of animation. That Burning actually ate a tango and shift shift Q to run away. That was definitely very very. That was close. If that magic missile landed, he would have been dead. Meanwhile, mid mid engagement going on right here. Looks like Lakels is going to go down, although he's very, very tanky, he's got double bracer and treads, I'll talk about this spell in just a bit, and Axis should be able to bring him down, oh, not even close, and if you guys are wondering why did Axis do no damage at all, uh, the, the wild Axis is a mixed type spell, so that means it does both magical and physical damage, which also means that you could reduce it by having both magical resistance and armor. Uh, each hero has innate 25% magical resistance, and so it did reduce the magical component of, of that spell a little bit. And of course, Dragonite is not a hero that is short on armor, 15 armor, that definitely reduced a lot of that wow axis of damage. So, worked out very nicely in that, in that case. Broodmother picks up a tower on the top lane, but ha, ah, Broodmother, excuse me, Bat Rider, here comes that Blink Dagger, and we're gonna see some, we're gonna see some ganks. And the question is, where will they set up the gank here? Are they going to be worried about the Broodmother on the top lane? Or are they going to be worried about the ba uh, the, the, the broom or excuse me, the Viper on the bot lane? I, I'm a little bit worried about the, the Viper, who is actually not using that that uh, Hand of Midas. Uh, he just used it right now. But yeah, he's going to go for a VIP booster first. That might be indication of that Vanguard. But considering the fact that he did not upgrade his boots, considering the fact that he didn't even get a Ring of Health, I feel like this is just a VIP booster just to help him survive a little bit more. And that's he's going to be going for a big item. So, 
I don't know what that big item might be. I hope it's some damage, because... Again, a farming viper not the most exciting thing. Here comes a four man smoke gank. And I, I think that viper not long for life. Although I don't think DK is going to be caring about it too much. I mean, you're, you are ganking the enemy carry, so that is going to hurt. This is a four man smoke gank. And so a lot of time is being wasted on Mithras. Mithras got to push down this tower to actually make it worth it at all. It looks like DK is trying to set up a kill, kill on, ironically, DK on the top lane. Let's see if Fissure is going to be nice. Uh... Maybe they are waiting for the Beastmaster to come in, although I do believe Lakel's he, he should realize what's going on. So let's take a moment to talk about this uh, Bracer, double Bracer in this uh, Power Trust build. He's actually sitting at 1400 HP, that's a lot of HP to work with. And the reason that he's going for this build is very similar to why Viper went Boots Vip Booster. Is he respects the enemy team's nuke damage and you respect the enemy team's stun damage. Uh, if, if the enemy team, which does have massive AoE stuns and slow, if they all drop it on you and you survive, and more accurately if you stay at half HP when that happens, it really makes the enemy team to, to lose incentive to keep on focusing you. And that you wasted the first barrage of spells, which is very, very important when a team fight goes. Also, you're up against Viper, who's actually not the most... DPS in carry uh, when it comes to team fights, he kind of just kills you, but he kills you very slowly. So having a lot of HP to tank your way and allow your teammate to scare away the Viper to kill the enemy team, very good choice. And looks like we're gonna see a team fight break out here. War goes off on TNK. Fissure's gonna hit as well. Oh, nice swap here. They're gonna bring him out. Lone might be a little bit trouble. Here comes Burning. Burning's gonna get one stun off. I think he's gonna get the kill. No, he's gonna turn back. Not gonna chase. Here comes Lakes. He's extremely tanking right now. Viper actually drop off a Viper strike on him. Not the best move on the TK. Here comes the Hastron. Uh, Burning can pick it up and go crazy. He's gonna go on Lakes right now. Oh, come on, come on, pick up the Hastron. Oh man, he danced back and forth and that wasted a lot of time. The back comes in right now. And Shabrish and Ice Blast gonna hit on three. Wow, that's gonna hurt right now. And looks like Lone Didi might be in trouble. He actually is gonna go down to the Ancient Apparition Ice Blast. We'll keep the curse on him. He is gonna shatter. Viper not chasing under the enemy tower. He does have half HP. Maybe a little bit worried about that. Uh, wow, I, I'm a little bit surprised that he didn't chase, but I guess. It is a legitimate concern to chase under the enemy tower against a Dragon Tail, one of the longest sun in the game. So it is going to make a little bit of sense. Oh, that was a lot of spider down the drain. And RTK cannot feed those spiderling. He does have 3k going in the bank, so he is farming exceptionally well as well. So let me check out how we're doing in terms of farm. 82 and 39. Burning is not, he is, he's not going Vanguard. He's, he's saving for a big item. He's not upgrading boots, so that is part of his game plan. We'll see exactly what that gives us here. And we have 67 on ROTK, man. These two is farming nice. And look at Lone Didi. He's farming nice as well. 70 creep kills, 15 minutes in. And that's vastly out farming a Dragonite. That's uh, Labaz not even close. I, I, although he's pretty much done. He's got the blink. So, Lakets has got to farm really big. And, well, things like these will help. Blink dust into uh, Flaming Lasso. They are going to send ROTK down. Batrider picks up that kill. And I wonder if he's going to go for Urn. Yeah, I think he is. That's kind of his very... Like, that's a patented Labad build, as we see a Puck kill on the mid lane. That was a Roar Magic Missile, a couple of stuns from Zippo, a couple of nukes from Zippo. But yeah, a patented build from a, a Labad Bat Rider. Boots, Blink, Urn, and uh, Gank like crazy. So we saw two Smoke Gank. Uh, actually, maybe three. I'm not too sure whether they use the Smoke on the top lane. But two on the Viper, on the bot, and uh, one on top. And that's how Mithras play. They gotta keep playing like this to really uh, play, uh, gank their way back in the game. Because, again, they're getting absolutely terrorized in the farming department. Viper up to 3k go. I got. I wonder what you're saving for. He's definitely not going for heart. You're, you're not going to rush a heart. You're not going to rice a heart. So, either a butterfly right from the get-go. Although, not too good. Because butterfly, probably one of the better items to pick up very late in the game. Not, not the first item you want to rush. So... Sacred Relic, I guess? Radiance Viper? I, I, that's that's a possibility, although Radiance Viper, I've not seen it too much, so I can't really vouch how good, how how, it's, how well it's going to do. Although, against, although I guess when you're orb walking and you're tanky with that VIP booster, I guess you could use a number. We'll, we'll, we'll see exactly what that's going to be. And uh, Brewmeadow is going to go for a BKB, although there is many, many things that the enemy team could do against a BKB, such as a swap, such as a flaming lasso. It's so good because the enemy team has a massive amount of 
Oh, that roar missing on Lakel is not going to help. And let's see, Burning come around. Here comes a Viper attack, but that's not going to be enough. And that's what exactly what I mean by the double bracer. And then now a Sage build. Ice Cream Apparition Ice Blast is going to miss. I do believe that Lone Dini is going to die. Crystal made him somehow survive through that. Yeah, but that's exactly what I mean. If you if he did not have the double bracer or the Sage, he definitely would have died there. Roar miss or not. Um, but yeah, having having that big survival and now being able to nuke down like a billion spiders, that thing helps. That will that will help. So big, uh, good item choices, and looks like he is gonna keep doing the tanky item build. Crystal Maiden gets a kill on the milling. Sorry for missing that. Let me. Can I go back? I think I can. I can, but let's see that. Cause cause I can. Oh, there's a team fight. We live the team fight. Oh man, Dota 2 having that StarCraft rewind feature. And we have all these texts coming in. That that was from the beginning of the game. But we're gonna watch this gank. Let's see who was out of position. But I was just saying, I think he's actually gonna upgrade that to a SMY. Not too bad. Gonna give you some nice mobility. Um, I Heaven Hel Heaven's Halberg is actually a decent choice. Although I'm not too sure what it Heaven's Halberg is actually in this game. Um, I, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Although Heaven's Halberg against a Viper who is actually farming for a carry item, um, viable. Definitely viable. 3500 on Viper, so uh, yeah, I am expecting a Sacred Relic. Although he might be uh, slow rolling with the. Uh... Uh oh, uh oh, Labat. Yeah, kind of, kind of getting abused by that long range initiation. That's exactly what I talked about early game. DK will abuse the fact that they do have Roar, they do have Fissure, and they do have Nova. Three of the best gankers in the game because they have massive range. I don't know what that ward is. I guess one of these guys panicked and just. <laughs> Maybe they expected this tower to go down, and then you could drop a ward. Although a little bit of, a little bit too early on that ward drop. I gotta say that was probably a misclick. Uh, these guys roaming around. Get to see what Lone D is really gonna go for. Looks like he is gonna go for maybe a combination of drums into a pipe. Although Mecha, 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 uh, Mecha Lone. Um, excuse me, Mecha Beastmaster. Definitely seen that before. Uh, being you know pulled out by I think Team Absolute Legend yeah, and I'm sure DK and Absolute Legend they they do scrim on a very occasional basis. Oh nice Sentry War that's gonna hit Lone DD Lone DD's gonna try to run out of range. Nice swap to put him back in range. In operation is gonna make sure he get the kill. So Lone DD not gonna fault him for a little bit out of position. Uh, just unlucky play. You kind of don't expect that Sentry War to kind of be out of nowhere and. Uh, Mistrust definitely capitalizing on top of that. Meanwhile, Gank going on the top lane here, and we are going to see a Dragon Tower. Good chain stun here, but will it be enough? And I think it will. Oh, Magic one up, and he's limping out, and you can see that under the web with treads. Oh my god, he's going to run out of life. No, he's out of web. A blink is going to get the bright kick in. So nice attempt here by ROTK, but simply not enough. The farming chart continues. 20 minutes in, about 110 creep kills, given the fact that he did was fighting in team fight here. He died a couple of times, he was fighting in team fight mid. That is just that's that's some insane farm for from Burning. And if anyone's wondering, I'm sure no one's wondering, but if anyone is wondering whether DK Burning will break ZSMJ's farming record, he won't. And ZSMJ's farming record is 720 creep kills in 55 minutes. Yeah, he's not gonna break it, because uh, I mean Nether Toxin last set is, is good and all, but Viper definitely does not have any mid-game flash farming tools. Although he might be getting ganged, but ah, uh, good TP out, and looks like we're gonna get a kill. The Kess gets a tower though. He, or, yeah, he's gonna pay very much so with his life. You're not gonna be running away from a Viper attack. Although, <laughs> Shaker, Shaker, Shaker's gonna last at that one. Although it's not too bad, cause, uh, considering that he's very, very close to his Blink Dagger. So, kind of a strong dodge here by... Uh oh, Lone Didi. Lone Didi is going to take a magic missile. Lone Didi is actually dying down multiple times. It might be very good for him to pick up a uh, cloak to get some magical resistance. 15% goes a long way, especially when you're a strength hero and you're up against like 80 billion nukes. And Batrider is just doing so much dirty work. Every time he comes off a cooldown with his flaming lasso, he's getting some ganks off. Just got off a gank on the top lane against the brood and now swinging on the mid to get out gank. Let me see how much how's he doing. He's 4, 2, and 3. Effective Batrider play. And he does not have his earned finish yet. Very surprising. Is it coming on the career? No, it's not. Yasha, that's for the Dragonite. Uh, we do have a Headdress Mecha finish on the Ancient... Or excuse me, not the... Yeah, Ancient Apparition. So, very effective AA play. He started out as a support. Got some farm. And now finishing a, a Mecha. He's going to go for a uh, Force Staff afterwards, presumably. 
maybe help out the Venge, get a couple of wars of Venge, could upgrade her boots or whatnot. I guess arcane boots wouldn't be too bad. Um, Puck definitely has an arcane boots, and that's a sign that he is going for a very utility base play. Um, he definitely did not have you know early bling dagger aspiration because he got actually shut down very hard on that bot lane. But yeah, he actually, after some successful gank, he, and he's gonna get a, that, this hop wave now. He's gonna get his blink. So Myth Trust's game plan looking pretty good. They are up by two kills. Only lost their tier 1 towers, and they actually pushed down all the tier 1 towers as well, so they're even in terms of towers, up by 2 kills, and they got their core items. And the core item being the two, the double bling dagger, and of course now Dragon Knight, very survivable against, uh, you know, with that SMY. He's moving very quickly, you gotta keep in mind that the the, uh, the Dragon form gives you some movement speed. I think it does, yeah. Bonus 25 movement speed. So that's going to combine very well with the Yasha and Tread. So he's moving very quickly. He's attacking very quickly. He's got a lot of HP to boot. And it looks like Lung D is going to set up a gank. It's not going to work out too well. There's a Roar. Actually hits him this time. Not a creep. Here comes the board getting slow. And another slow comes in. The Chainstun comes. And we'll have a swap. Yes, we will. Echo Slam gets dropped. It's going to only hit on the Venge. Venge is going to go down. But that's going to be fine. Because Lakel doing some big attack. Burning does have the Radiance. But his damage output is just not enough at this point. And Chase will go the other way. Bling Dagger cooling down right now he's actually gonna go for chase zipples basically gonna be dead no he's not gonna give a chase lakel's gonna turn back again i cannot stress enough if he did not go for a tank build like this dragon i would have been ganged down so many times so good read by mid trust and kind of capitalizing on the play style of dk we're seeing some high action high level dota right here as you expect from uh dk and mid trust both very respectable team here otk gonna go for the bkb he does have a finish BKB is not going to help him too much from getting ganked, which, I mean, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, you're probably still going to die if the enemy team has good enough chain stun, although he's, he is getting enough HP to really start surviving against most stuff. Uh, but he's really getting it against the team. If I sure they have fully mean last, so that could really shut you down. They have to swap, that could delay your right click. But the BKB is still good against like all of these magical DPS output from if trust. And really, aside from Dragonite, it's, it's pretty much all DPS, um, all magical DPS. So it's still a very, very good item. It's definitely better to Orchid. I mean, who, who are you really going to Orchid? There's really no strong uh, Orchid target, I guess, aside from Puck, I suppose. But yeah, BKB is definitely the better choice. He's going to go for, I presume, Butterfly after this, although Yasha would be a decent choice as well. Are these guys smoking up? I'm waiting for a smoke to come in. Yeah, Viper, Viper Radiance, and he's got it, I think he's got it like 22 minutes in, something like that. I, I could definitely go back and check, although I don't want to waste your time doing so, but I, I assume he got it 22 minutes. So, 22 minute Midas Vip Booster Radiance, that's, that's, that's pretty good farm. I'm very curious, what the hell is this gold per minute? 400 gold per minute? that's actually not that impressive uh, although he hasn't been farming at all for the past couple of minutes so that that slowed him down a little bit smoke and comes on the top lane a single viper strike is basically death for anyone although again <laughs> myth trust looking for their own smoke gank so uh hit and a miss a swing and a miss for both these guys but I, I do believe that dk does have the creep equilibrium so they could actually transition off to this with push me while these guys kind of just not accomplishing anything at all Hyperstone is going to be the item choice for Dragon Knight. He's going to transition to AC most likely, although, although the uh, Maelstrom, not not a bad item choice. But uh, he's going to be a Soul Curious. A Blast is going to miss and we're going to see a big engagement in jungle. Let's see how the initiation is going to come in. Are they going to go on Lone DD? Yes, they are. I, I don't think Lone D is going to die. Flaming Lasso on Burning. Can they bring him down very quickly? He's very tanky. Echo Slam gets dropped down. Burning's going to go down. Myth Trust wins this team fight big time. Double kill on, on the Dragonite right now. And with Labat chasing the Shaker. Shaker's going to be a dead as well. Brewmander gets one kill, but that's, that's not going to be enough. Shaker turns around, but oh. We saw that new, uh, new Flame Break being used. Three kills getting claimed here by the Dire, and they're going to transition into mid push. Brewmother really not going to do too much to, to stop this push. A very uh, Pinoy playstyle of a Dragonite, which is actually leveling the Dragon form and also maxing that Dragon Tail as well. And basically going to use a stun duration. And we saw the stun duration actually doing a lot of, of dirty work. Oh, instead of transitioning and push, Mitras is going to go for the first sure Roshan. Good choice as well. Yeah, we saw a lot of dirty work being done. That stun uh, on, on the. Uh, 
on the Beastmaster was absolutely key. If he if the Beastmaster got the roar off, not only will he stun the Dragon Knight for like three and a half seconds, he also pushes and apply a very big slow on the AoE against the enemy team, which is actually going to be key. So the long stun from Lakez. Uh, was very, was very very important in terms of getting those kills. He did get level 16, although his ultimate is still on cooldown, and uh, DK comes around to steal this Roshan, all, and and it wasn't as sure as I thought it would be. DK respawned very quickly because we are only 26 minutes in the game. Uh, the farm rate of both teams kind of scaring me up, and the blink dagger initiation. Lone Nidhi gets caught again, and he's gonna explode without using his ultimate again. Here comes the brood mother, and they are gonna get off one kill, but are can I get off a second? I do believe Puck is gonna forfeit his life. That's a second kill. And I think DK could actually transition into the Roche Pit. A very, very strong comeback here from DK. Uh, let's see if the Diary is going to allow him to do so. I think they really can't issue too much with the Bat dead. Uh, with the Puck dead, they definitely lose every bit of the initiation. And the Broodmother could actually easily lifesteal. Although his lifesteal is off cooldown. Uh, on cooldown for about 20 more seconds. They don't do the, you know, again, they don't do the biggest TPS. A buyback here from the Puck. It looks like they want to fight this. It's going to be close. Roshan very, very low. Looks like... Ooh, he's gonna pick it up. Viper is gonna pick it up. Here comes Dragon at Crystal Megan. It gets stunned off a second stun. Did Blink Dagger initiation right now. Dream a Dream Coil. Oh, looks like Crystal Megan is gonna die. Ancient Apparition bursts in right now with an ultimate. We are gonna see Viper respawn back very quickly. ROTK is BKB is running out. Here comes Viper. He could easily go for multiple kills, but he's not doing enough damage. In fact, he's getting out slow by Lakels. It looks like they're gonna turn around two semi carries against Lakels. A Blink Dagger buyback from the Bat Rider. He's gonna get one kill. Burning's gonna die a second time here. Broodmother continue to right click and it looks like Flaming Lasso cooldown just right now. There's a dust against ROTK. RTK can go down. Buyback. No, RTK is going to be okay right now. Buyback from Lone Dini gets off a of roar. Will it be enough? Not going to be it because the Kels bought back again. Insane amount, mass amount buyback here. And Lone Dini out in huge trouble right now. They're not. Oh, I guess with the uh, with that Napalm, that should be it because he's hasting it. Well, not ha really hasting it, but with Napalm and Yasha's speed bonus, Lone is going to get stunned. You can see that the new uh, Flame Break. Casting behind the behind the Beastmaster, pushing Beastmaster back towards the enemy team. Good cast here by Lebat. And great play both by both teams, but Myth Trust being the fact that they are on the dire side, they bought back multiple times. Dragonite bought back, Batrider bought back, Pug bought back, and that with three buybacks, I, I guess it was worth it. Three buyback trading an Aegis and a buyback from Beastmaster. Definitely hard to call really who won the team fight, because there was two extra buyback, although Dire did win the team fight. It's hard to say, but yeah, Viper, he's he, he's got the farming item, and that's kind of what I meant earlier. We, I'm not too sure what a farming Viper does for you. He, he does damage, uh, but he just doesn't do it quickly enough. In, in, a, in a, you know, I guess a perfect scenario, Viper, Viper kills everyone, but that's assuming that his teammate survives long enough and, and tank long enough for him to actually start doing the killing. Uh, he, he does, you know, damage over time and it's over a long long time and these team fights are not lasting long enough especially with these repetitive buybacks so we see viper unless he picks up yet another big item which he doesn't seem like he's doing so because he's going for bkb it, it's gonna be tough but once the bkb again uh, even though the enemy team can still stun you with a flaming lasso can still swap you it, it's good against all the other aoe magical damage and that's what he's really getting it for so Good choice, and even though he does have corrosive skin to for magical resistance, again, it's the stun, it's the damage that he's really mitigating, which is which is fine. But again, BKB only gives you plus 24 damage, and and he doesn't have too much. He's only got what 120 right now for for a hero that's been farming for like 20 minutes in the game. 120 damage, not too respectable. Again, we are seeing some exceptional farm, although now uh, the Broodmother has you know firmly overtaken that role. Still though, let's check out how we're doing in terms of gold graph. Radiant size still leading by a healthy almost 5k gold, but in, in terms of positioning, I think they are losing it a little bit. They cannot lose yet another team fight. Myth Trust, they're going counter warding as a team. In terms of item progression, let's see how we're doing. Double Blink Dagger is up, Force Staff is up. Uh, Force Staff up on the Bat Rider. I think, I, if you guys remember that game, he, he goes Lothar's Edge, or excuse me, Shadow Blade in this game after a Force Staff, so. Kind of a insane, insane bat rider build, but again, patented by a bat, and looks like they're going to transition into push. Someone's seeping in. He's eating nuke. 
Grimmoto is going to drop off a web and looks like he is going to initiate it off. There's a flame. Oh, he's going to get completely chased on it. Nope. Nice BKB by ROTK. He's going to go for Labat Labat. Very tank, but not enough right now. Swap him out. Nice swap here by the Ventral Spirit. Lone Didi dies. No roar again. Lakels is going to go down the burning. He is doing that residual damage. Took forever for him to do so. It looks like Super is going to wind up. He's going to be fine. Meanwhile, Ancient Apparition gets a double kill. Viper, he is going to chase down everyone without DK in position. He is going to be able to do so. TNK is going to TP out just fine right here. And looks like Bat Rider will be able to blink out just fine as well. Here comes the Puck. Maybe he's going to look for yet another kill. I don't think they could really do so without the Flame Dagger initiation. Or excuse me, the Flaming Lasso initiation. And that team fight, again, in the favor of Dire Side. Because Lone DD cannot drop off his war. I don't know where the hell his position is. I gotta just blame it on positioning. If you get, I mean, if you get smoke gank initiation initiated here and you didn't drop off a roar, fine. But if you don't drop off a roar here, if you don't drop off a roar here and then here, a little bit mispositioning by Beastmaster. And it's not hard to drop off a roar because you have so much range. So I, I just gotta fault his positioning. Even though he's like 20 times better than I am, he's, he's not casting his best spell, which is the reason that you pick him for it, right? He does have the mecha as well, so I guess it's also a, a kudos to Dire for actually focusing on Lone DD. Because if you could kill him right, right, you get a lot of value for your spells. I mean, like, a lot. You mitigate the roar, you mitigate the mech, and you also mitigate a constant aura being provided by, by the Beastmaster. So, I guess that's a big part of why Myth Trust is kind of poning DK right now. DK got to Gotta play better, because again, these two semi-carries, they don't extend into the mid or late game well at all, BKB or not, so uh, they're gonna try to extend the mid game with butterflies and whatnot, but they got maybe 10 more minutes, 15, very generously 15. And after that, your aura is gonna really peak out, although he hasn't even maxed it yet. Uh, and, and you know, Ventral Spirit, excuse me, Crystal Maiden and Shaker at that point just don't do too much. I um, mean, they have some AoE, but aside from that, they don't really do too much against a Dragonite, uh, who is now having uh, no. He's went back for a life steal. So very interesting choice. So I guess um, Lakez already uh, realized he could tank enough to survive. All he really needs to do, as he kind of not fire breath that hawk, all he really needs to do is stay in the team fight by life stealing his way back, and he does definitely have enough attack speed to warrant a life steal purchase. So not a poor choice. Looks like these guys trying to smoke up. Don't want to smoke up on the ward, although they might be doing it right now. It's going to be rough if they do so. Yep, they they are completely seen. They are completely seen. Although, again, it's a little bit of visual bug here. This guy's going to back off. Wait for the smoke to wear out. Kind of not the best place you want to smoke. I mean, that's... Eh, DK, DK making a little bit blunder here and there. We have eight urn charges on Zippo. So anytime that DK is going to win a team fight, they are going to push down a Rax or two because they can do it with all those, you know, life regeneration. Although I'm not sure whether what they could win a team fight. Here comes initiation from Myth Trust. And all hands on this Bat Rider. All eyes on this Bat Rider. Who is going to initiate on? Of course, Broodmother is a, is a hero of choice. Although I think they are going to lose this tower outright. Yep. Uh, he's trying to burn right in. He's not going to find anyone. Shaker. Fissure's gonna miss and shoot Beastmaster trying to get our roar off. Again, Beastmaster, you, you cannot get initiated off. Uh, did I say they're gonna initiate on the Broodmother or the Viper? No, I meant the Beastmaster. Beastmaster is the hero to initiate on because, again, if you kill him outright, a lot of value of those kills. Broodmother's gonna TP up top, nowhere near to his uh, butterfly yet. And right now, DK definitely not in a position, although uh, the Go Char says differently. Uh, I, I think the kill chart is where, we, where we're at right now. That's kind of the more important. The reason they're leading the go is because they're keeping up these towers, which is very important. There's a gem just kind of right here, just chilling. And I, I guess Crystal Maiden can pick that one up. That's cool, too. Smoke gang. Once again, both teams actually using these smokes very aggressively. The difference? Well, Myth Trust is smoking under the tower, and they're not going to get <laughs> seen by a smoke. And I don't think they're going to find anyone either, because that's kind of... Kind of obvious, and DK is gonna stick around, and that's why Smoke of the Sea in the highest level of play, not gonna do too much. Kind of just, I, I guess it does allow you to go into enemy jungle and place a very aggressive ward. Uh, but item progression wise, we do see TNK having a drum. Eventual Spirit doesn't have anything aside from wards and smoke, or wards and dust, which is not bad. I think we have a gem. Yes, we do. Blink, arcane gem, and a uh, no tomorrow on the puck. So not too bad, despite having a tough early game. The Kells. Gonna be going for a uh, AC. Af after he gets the AC with Sage, Helm, and AC, 
on this Dragonite who is not dying in any fight, that's that's gonna be rough. Although he died once and he had the buyback, I think I think they're okay. I think okay. EXP lead yeah on the dire side, get they are winning the fight as expected. And I don't think this go advantage is really helping DK because DK's item choices is I mean I'm not gonna fault their item choices. I guess the hero. It's just a hero. Like the hero needs so many more items to truly be effective. And uh, still still yet to see the Viper that really carries in the late game situation. Because that's not what the hero's supposed to do, in my opinion. Again, he kills, but he kills very slowly. And uh, lacking the burst damage on a carry hero is kind of kind of a disadvantage, if you will. Especially when Lone DD have not cast an ultimate for 20 minutes now, it feels like. Lone DD's gonna go for drums as well. I feel like Lone DD might want to go for just raw HP, like a vid booster. Uh, because damn, he, he needs to survive these team fights. Looks like we're gonna just go into a farm stage, so more item checks. Looks like we're gonna see a uh, attempt for a four staff, which is gonna be good if Seshi Long Didi gets flaming last, so I could force him away. Although might just force him closer closer to the enemy team, and that's pretty much it. Uh, four staff is finished on the Crystal Maiden, so this Crystal Maiden's pretty pretty stacked. Phase and phase and force and eight charges on the urn. It's decent, it's decent. There's again this gem just sitting there. That's cool. And Crystal Maiden pick up two level ultimate. I like to see that. Definitely. I don't I don't like to see the extra two level on the arcane aura. I don't think his team really needs it. Especially with all those arcane boots running around. And by all those arcane boots running around, I mean one. Uh, but honestly I don't think really they need the the the, the mono regeneration at this point. I think having a plus two stats. Two level stats, a little bit more helpful. Shigure's getting a lot of farm. I wonder what he's gonna go for next. Although probably buyback is is it maybe a blame mail. In this case, we have a double damage on Lakets. Uh, of course, TNK has still not learned what what Ice Vortex does. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the game real fast and let's just read what Ice Vortex does. It says uh, grant some bonus magical damage given number of physical attacks, and uh, it only bonus damage only activates against uh, enemy heroes. So not against creeps nor towers, and thus you're just uh, actually losing attack speed. So TNK, despite being a very good Ancient Apparition, still doesn't know what his actually hero does. Uh, which is actually a little bit hilarious if you think about it. Which is cool though, he's still poning, he's still poning. Looks like Mythtrust might slow roll this one to victory, as uh, they eventually they will outfarm DK. DK can't, can't really leave their base, and they're trying to do so with the smoke gang, and looks like, ooh, again? Uh, DK cannot get off a of roar, and looks like Brewmother... Very, very brave attempt to kind of initiate on eventual spirit of all things. Oh, they are going to get a decent block off BKB. Going to be used. Swap out here. Not the best usage of a BKB brood. Here comes Dragonite. He's going to get some slow off. They did use a roar. I know. Finally, they used a roar on Lakets. But it would not be enough. Echo Slam gets dropped. Labas stunning, burning, and burning. Look at his HP dropping very quickly. He's getting out DPS by a Dragonite, as you would expect. RTK is going to get focused down as well. And Mitra is going to win this team fight on the long one. They're going to pick off Lung DD as well. Not the best choice to initiate against a Ventral Spear who swapped out. And double kill gets picked up by here in Chaperation. He actually did cast Chilling Trust in that team fight, and that was nice, because it did actually was a team fight. So now the push goes in the other way, and Myth Trust is gonna claim this game, I feel like. Maybe a little bit too early call it, but they are up by 13 kills. They are gonna be up by tower kills after this. Well no, actually even in that, but yeah, I think I think they're gonna start hitting the racks, which is which is a big thing. Um, Crystal Maiden and the Shaker is going to be back soon, although the Blink Dagger is, is really killing the Diary side. And also, I feel like the item choice on Myth Trust is just perfect. They're getting so much tank item on this Dragon. Again, Ice Vortex being, or excuse me, Chilling Touch being dropped. Again, TNK, please. Someone, someone, if you know Ty, just send TNK a private message and just tell him that, that it doesn't work. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, the, the good item choices on Dragonite is really what sealed the deal. SMY generally not the uh, most common item choice on Dragonite, but in this case, you can see it has worked wonders. But I might have spoke too soon as we see a bleed. Uh, they are going to kill the Dragonite. They are going to defend the racks as well. Laban in a little bit of trouble. He, that Fissure Block, wow. That Fissure Block was perfect. Jesus, it blocked off the Shaker. It blocked off the Bat, and that gave them two kill. That was nice. That was nice. Did they use any buyback from that? No, they didn't buy back from that. Ooh, nice four staff. And that did save him a swap him out as well. That's that was cute. That was cute. That was two kill going forward to a DK, but 
in this in these team fights, you see that again, the Viper not doing enough. Uh, ROTK is doing a lot of damage, but he's melee, so he's getting kited around by Dragonite all day long. That slow definitely uh, hurts. And DK's gonna turn around and get a mid tower. They can actually go for the Raxus if they want to do so. Bad. That's gonna force a bad buyback, and that's cute for them to go back after this tower. I don't think they can even go for a Roshan. It's just not safe enough. Crystal Maiden's gonna drop off Ward. They, between Hawk and Ward, they'll have complete vision, although. I mean, against Smoke of the Sea, you can never count too much. And they are going to go for Roche. I really don't think that Dire will allow him to do so. Dragonite is going to be back in 15 seconds. Maybe they realize that Dragonite won't be buying back. And Dragonite definitely does not have to go for the buyback. So yeah, never mind. It might just be enough for them to get it. We are having the back coming. Oh, that, that nuke. Hurting Zippo quite a bit. There's a mech up here. Will it be enough? Will it be enough? There's a dub being used. Shaker gonna drop off stun. There's a roar if they can kill Labat right from the get-go. And yes, they will kill Labat. A lot of ultimate being used. No one picks up the Aegis. Looks like Shaker's gonna pick it up. Not the best use. Uh, Burning should have dropped a TP scroll. But I guess in the heat of moment, no one's really caring. Shaker with the Aegis. Not the, <laughs> not the best. Not the best thing. And looks like DK is trying to seize this moment. Again, and this is a 4v5. DK's been uh, playing 5v4 against against Mithras for the past couple of minutes. But uh, if there's one team that can play 5v4 or 4v5, if you will, it is Mithras. They, they've shown it against Orange. They might be showing it against uh, against DK right here. If anyone didn't get that pun, well, go watch Mithras versus Orange. One of the best Dota 2 games. Dota 1 games, excuse me, of all time. Pretty insane stuff. AC is finished on, on Dragonite, and he's basically unkillable at this time. 43 armor. We're seeing a 23k HP. Lifesteal. Ugh. Pretty insane. He's, once he basically finishes the Satanic, like, he literally just walks in and kills stuff now. Um, you know, so I guess DK still have some glimmer of hope. They are doing some nice physical DPS, but nowhere near what they really need. Up to 2k go here for the Beastmaster, so I wonder what he's going to get. Buyback would be a decent choice. Although, it shouldn't be Necro Book because it is going to be too late at this point to really make it work. Uh, Medallion Courage would be decent. Maybe you ask your Crystal Maiden to pick it up. There's a Cloak on CM, I like that choice. That AI Splat is definitely killing her, very much so. I guess Pipe. Pipe would be decent, but you don't want Lone to pick it up. Moment of Truth. Moment of Truth. A Teleport Squirrel? Teleport screw. Shaker going for a Ghost Scepter, of course, against that Dragonite and whatever physical damage coming his way. I guess Ghost Scepter is not the best buy against all these nukers. Although if you, oh, Vlats, of course, as expected, you have uh, you know a couple of physical guys that could life steal the armor, the late game. Vlats is not a bad utility late game item if you don't have anything better to buy. Although I do, I do believe Four Staff is just you know overall a little bit better in all cases. Yeah, it looks like Crystal Maiden is going to be going for a, a pipe, although she's not going to finish it before this game ends. I don't think. Although this game might last uh, quite a bit long time because we are, uh, we are uh, you know taking a little bit while. So I'm gonna give you uh, a wow. You guys see the replay bar, so that's that's cute. Gonna show off a couple of replay features. So I rewind earlier. You could actually use the directed grammar or is it free grammar? Play perspective? Okay, I guess you can't. One of the actual, I guess you can do it with this replay. One of the other replay feature, I guess it might not have been implemented here yet. I think it was. But the replay feature I'm trying to talk about is there's this, if you under directed mode, you could have like auto speed and it basically speeds you very quickly through the farming stage and it slows down during a team fight and you don't have to press anything because it's you know under directed so you see all the team fight so that's that's pretty cool although for a caster like myself i i kind of gets annoyed because i don't want to see dk farming neutrals if i'm talking about i don't know you know long dd not dropping off roars i want to select on him you know uh so but yes another sacred relic here on uh oh what is this what the hell is this a divine rapier or a abysmal blade? I think it's divine. Wow. Okay. Which makes complete sense. As a surprise as it sound, it makes complete sense. Cause what have I what have I been QQing about for the past 10-15 minutes? Well, I've been QQing about Long DD dying too much. But the other part was Vipers just don't do enough damage. And I guess a, a, a Divine Raper, whoa, that does, does give you a whole bunch of damage. And uh, 
It's definitely a very bold choice because if you die, you lose the divine and you just lose the game. But on the long run, they are going to lose the game anyway. So I, I'm, I, kudos to DK for recognizing that. A lot of lesser teams would have just kept farming on a Viper. Maybe would have gotten for a Butterfly. But Butterfly plus, six dam so plus 60 damage, not nearly ga as game changing as a Divine Rapier. So yeah, Burning going for it. And he's only about 800 go away. So obviously he's... He might be saving for, uh, I guess, even if you buy back after you lose a divine, it doesn't mean anything. So I guess, yeah, we, we might see, we might see Viper just, just go to town. Hopefully, with this BKB pop, hopefully he doesn't get initiated on bat. So all eyes on Labat. And again, let's see if Labat's MVP. Again, he, he's, he's definitely got some MVP play. Instead of going for a, a Shadow Blade, he's going for Ogre Club. So Black King Bar is item choice, although I don't think it's it really going to do too much against the big right clicks, especially when there's a roar. Eh. It's going to shut down Crystal Maiden and Shaker, although I don't really think that's going to matter all that much. I, I feel like getting armor at this point is pretty big deal, although I say that, you know, he, he, didn't, he probably didn't buy the Ogre Club um, before he saw the, <laughs> Sager, the second Sager Relic on, Dry, on Viper. If there's any hero that buys two Sacred Relic, I, I do not think Viper is a hero that... Uh, Viper is a hero that just pops in my mind, you know? Who would buy two Sacred Relic? No one really buys two Sacred Relic. It, it just doesn't seem a synergy. I guess... I guess Slone Druid could buy two Sacred Relic? Like, you know, Radiance into Divine? No one's Spectre buying it. Nor do you want Phantom Land. Ah. A useless brain exercise, but we're gonna see, see two sacred relic. I could I could safely say that this is the first time I've ever seen something like this done in a uh, pro game. Okay, let's see if Burning's gonna buy it right now. I guess another thing that you can do, although again very dumb, is you buy the demon edge and just save it on the crow, and then you save for buyback. <laughs> And then uh, a team fight breaks out, you die, you, you buy back, you, you actually build a divine right then, and then you TP back in a fight. And basically they use their best spells by then, and you could go to town with your BKB. Like, it's it's something you can consider, but it's pretty dumb. So maybe you shouldn't consider it. Uh, burning. Does the courier still not even going to it? Is he going to go for three divine? Or is, is this some... Is this some troll build from Burning? I don't think he's trolling. Don't definitely don't think it's trolling farm rate. Definitely seen some uh, crazy farm here. 25, uh, 250, 260, 150. Uh, they they are still out farming the enemy side overall, but DK holding that much farm and the fact that he's at 5k go, so that's a buyback. Uh, he could he could finish his uh finish his satanic right now if he wants to do so, but. Meanwhile, we see a Gwinsu being finished, although I guess it's not called Gwinsu anymore. Because that is copyrighted, apparently. It, is, it will always be a Gwinsu in my heart. It will always be Yule Scepter in my heart. Here we go, DK trying to win the game. Is Divine up here yet? No, it is not. 3.5. I guess you buy it now, right? No, still not buying it. Maybe he is going to be going for that dumb build I'm talking about. Save for buyback. Yeah, I guess. Let's let's see how I watch this team find the next engagement. Of course, initiation again on the hand of Mithras, and that's why that's why I really like Mithras's heroes. Uh, even even if you go up against mass damage, because you have better initiation, you have many different ways to fight it. You could swap to initiate. You could use a flaming lasso to initiate. You could use puck dream call to initiate. You have so much different way to do it, and uh, you know you're basically prepared for anything. So it's always good to see. And Viper still not doing too much, so another quick round of item check as we still, for the last 10 minutes, we kind of been free farming. Let's see which team is going to initiate first with a smoke. As you would you know, one of these teams would try to do it. The fact that uh, Mithras got a gem and a hex, a little bit difficult to really do so successfully. 4200 here on Burning. Shaker's got... 14. Uh, Broodmother's got a Yash after this. And the reason why, if you're wondering, as we see the Divine is going to be finished, the reason why you think uh, why, why Broodmother gets the Yasha is because it gives you like that 10% movement speed. 
uh, in between web and treads and that uh, 10% you're moving in 522 which might sound like a very broken thing but the fact that you're a melee hero and you're chasing against faster moving heroes with four staffs and whatnot it, it's a necessity and uh, oh it, it's not the best leak uh, excuse me not the worst leak game item as Manta Illusionist does give you some nice DPS bonus in the late game but yes burning does have the divine finish although again he's he's having on the crow is he actually no he's not gonna go for divine he went for reaver he's went for heart okay that's that's fine too that's fine too so we're gonna see yet more farming I don't think DK is interested to do anything until they finish the divine and maybe they finish the divine they would go for lifesteal yes I know lifesteal and uh, poison attack don't work together but again if you're busting out like you know a billion damage you might actually want to take advantage of lifesteal you can actually just toggle poison attack on and off if you need to chase with it yeah just just keep it off and basically orb walk with it if we need to do so having the lifesteal especially when you're popping 400 damage per pop maybe 500 damage per pop pretty big deal looks like both teams trying to smoke it up is radiance being turned off yep radiance being turned off on burning a mark of a pro play only you know pro player kind of remember things like that and they're kind of just Okay, Nova gets dropped. That's gonna get them seen. Me on Miftrust smoking around as well. Hope Valve fixes this in the next week that we don't see uh, visible heroes walking with smoke icons. Looks like we're gonna fight over the third Roshan, and this is gonna be big. Having a Roshan engagement should be in advantage of Dire Side. Yes, there's a Hawk on the Radiant from the Beastmaster, but you know you have three initiators. Having three initiators, like I said, time and time after again, gives you an advantage. And also, you do have ancient apparition, which allows you to fire off an ancient apparition ice blast on the multiple sides of the map, and that's going to get the creep equilibrium slowly pushed out as you basically get better and better positioning. And once the creeps are over here, once the creeps are over there, it really forces Radiant to back off, and that's that's time for the Dire to go for the Roche if they want to do so. Ghost Scepter being picked up by ancient apparition, great choice against the impending big damage coming in from the Radiant side. So I, I was, I was, as I was celebrating the fact that Viper is going to get some damage, he went back to get a heart. Which, I mean, if you're doing it in big preparation of massive late game damage with the Divine, I understand. And it does make some logical sense. Although if Myth Trust decide to take a fight right now, and I'm a little bit surprised why they're not taking a fight, they could definitely just overrun the Radiant side. I, I think they definitely can. They're going to go for the slow and for sure thing. They do have Satanic on this dragon, I, I cannot imagine what's going to happen. I'm not even sure whether a Divine will actually do it against a, a Lifesteal Dragonite. I mean, he could stun you, he could drop you like 10% HP, and you could regen back everything if you allow him right click. So it's very, very key that they actually pick up Lakets quickly enough, and there's all oh, ROTK. That's that's going to be it. They're, they're going to lose a fight. No, Echo Slam on three. Never mind. Viper gets a double immediately. They're going to focus on Lakets. Lakets going to die before he pops a Satanic. Great play here by DK. And I spoke way too soon. Aegis is going to go the other way. But do we have buyback? Yes, we do. Dragon, I can buy back. Puck cannot. Eventual Sphere cannot. So that means Aegis is going to go to burning. And... Dude, you could just sell the Midas right now, get the Aegis, and then finish the Vine. The game is gonna turn around. Wow. No, it. What? Are you serious? Okay, at least pick up the cheese. So, just. You can still pass the cheese. I am. I, I, if he gets a Divine, if he doesn't get the cheese. I will be mind blown. It's gonna get the big creep wave on the top, although Tower is gonna clean some of it up. He will have to go for the divine right after this. The third Aegis going to the Shaker was not what I expected. But again, cheese, cheese is just as good. The Fermat just as good. Just as good. Hopefully. I mean I, I get I get the fact you wanna keep your keep your Midas. Uh, one big difference about Midas in Dota 1 and Dota 2 is in Dota 1, you can't sell the Midas after it's on cooldown. In Dota 2, you could use it and then sell it. So you get like an extra usage of it. And I'm not sure why he's not using it either. So evidently a lot of um, burnings is mine and none of which include using that hand of Midas, which is kind of just basically not earning him any gold right now. He's going to sell it right now. I, I think he... He's going to sell it. I think... I don't think he... Yeah, I don't think he realized that he could actually use it and then sell it. So... Ah, it turns out not uh, not all pro player knows everything about this game, which is not a surprise considering that we do have TNK casting 
casting uh, the best the best spell in the game uh, on his teammates. And when I say the best spell in the game, I, I mean the worst spell in the game. If I'm ever making a top five worst spell in the game, Chilling Touch is somewhere on the top five list. You can count on that. Speaking of which, I do believe Windrunner is probably a in this game. Because she's too good of a hero to not being picked. Looks like we're going to diverge back into farming. I, I just hope that that choice of... Oh, cheese gets passed. Okay. Okay, we're good. Still no Divine being purchased yet. Which, it makes sense. Again, if you're wondering why this makes sense, it makes sense the fact that you don't really need a Divine until you go for that Pish. So, he's basically farming and stockpiling gold right now. And what he's basically going to do is, when he decides to go for the push, when he decides to go for the fight, he will buy the Divine, like, on the way. And then, and then you know, work from there. Uh, it's very bad to have the Divine now, and you neutral with the Divine, and then you get picked off. That's that's just the game. So, again, very smart play by, by Burning right there. Although, that's kind of just give, that's just give a signal to, to Mithras, like, yo, bro, uh, come gank me. And uh, if you gank me, then uh, I won't have the Divine even when I'm buyback. That's the signal that he's sending in. Although, I guess Mithras don't know whether they have the, uh, you know, Demon Edge on the Crow. 4k gold on, on Burning, he will soon approach the time where he actually has both enough for the Demon Edge and also for a death and a buyback. He's about a thousand and a couple hundred gold away from that. But we're, we're seeing some, some hardcore farming. This is... This is... Uh, we're seeing a 1400 gold lead. Dang, Jesus. That's a big gold lead. But I feel like Mithras still has the advantage. Maybe, maybe they don't feel like they have an advantage. I guess the gold chart says the otherwise. And now the EXP swings the other way as well, despite the fact that Dyer is up by 8 kills. So maybe maybe Mistrust is actually the one that knows what's going on and not me. They're like, we can't push into this, we can't push against the Radiant side because they have more gold, they have more advantage, and I guess better items. Let's quickly give us an item check. Uh, gem has been picked up, has, no, nope, <laughs> not picked up, apparently. Uh, I, I guess DK is approaching to godlike status. Is he going for a Divine? Well, oh man, that's going to be nice if we see something like that. Beastmaster gets a Yule Scepter. I'll talk about that in a bit. I'm not too sure. I guess if, if Satanic gets popped and you don't have an extra stun, you could use it off. Pretty good. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. RTA is initiated. Going to pop his BKB and TP out. Is he going to get swapped? No, I guess swap was... What? What? Swap was up? Did he not... He was trying to click on him and he clicked on the Drake or something? That would have been funny. But that was a misplay. That should have been a brew kill. Brew did have buyback, but I mean, still. Although, 22 times 30, you lose 660 gold, you're down to 1700. That would have been close. Yeah, that would have brought him to zero gold. So I guess, misclick on a Drake, or just forgot that Venge swap cancels TP. This game's just getting weirder and weirder as it progresses. Viper, no blacking bar just yet. Or excuse me, not blacking bar, no, uh... I've been looking, I've been on the lookout for this Divine for like an hour. Is he going to buy it now and go for the push? Y you can't just hold it for like an hour and not... I, I guess he's going to... What? <laughs> Alright. As I was saying, I guess you can uh, when, when the Satanic gets popped on the Dragonite and you don't have an extra stun to immediately pop him off, you, you can use him up. And by the time he flies off on the ground, he, it's you know, the Satanic is already gone. And the Satanic is the biggest item pop that he could actually do. But right now, I'm not, I'm not liking the chances on the Radiant side. Even when the Radiant finishes that Divine, they, they just have too much. They have a Blink Hex now, they have a Swap, they have a Blink Flaming Lasso. It's it just not looking good on the, on the Radiant side. Although, one of these teams gotta feel they're comfortable, because neither of these teams is actually deep pushing. I guess DK is not feeling comfortable either, because they're really losing on the Initiation War. And they're just getting as much farm as possible. I guess I guess this is where one everyone farms their hexes, although no one's really close for hex. Shaker. Why would they give the Aegis to the Shaker? I guess Shaker gives you very, very good chain stun when he comes back alive. Although it's a it's a 15 second cooldown. And Chan Totem's not really reliable at all. I guess you even give it to the Beastmaster, to be honest. I mean, after his war, he's pretty much useless. Uh oh, if they get a gank off on Crystal Maiden, that's that's a push. That's a push. Uh oh. 
And if you're wondering why, it's like, oh, why is it a big deal? Echo Slam on three, maybe not a push. Everyone low HP, and here comes Burn, and gets off one kill, melee second kill, and Lakets is gonna get slowed down. He's gonna have to try to TP up, but he doesn't even have a TP score. Satanic not gonna be enough triple kill on the Viper, and they're gonna go for Ancient Operation. He goes on the low ground, but here comes a Blink Enchant Totem. Oh, self block here by Rare Root. Oh, self cyclone. Self cyclone, self cyclone. We're gonna have yet another cyclone. Can we have another self cyclone? No cyclone. Yeah, there's a freeze by here by Zippo. We're gonna see a Rax here. Nicely played by DK. A slow roll game, but I did not expect that. The fact that Crystal Maiden gets initiated off and she was gonna survive. And uh, I guess having Pipe, Force Staff, and Phase would definitely helping that. And of course, Zippo, please hope that I, I, you remember that you have eight charges on the wand, so give Yuru some love. Cause damn, he want he saved you your life there. He gave you that team fight, that Echo Slam on three. So I guess Myth Trust got baited by a Crystal Maiden. How often have we seen that, right? Crystal Maiden baiting a, a perfect Echo Slam, Echo Slam, Echo Slam. Sorry, on three hero. Immediate buyback here. Burning still have he has purchased his divine. Would be a no no divine just yet. He's a Viper has a butterfly. Okay. So this is. This is some intent. He drops out the cheese. Who picks it up? Okay. Uh, we have a crit here on the broom. Is this some like, sick mind game? It's like, dude, I, I have to divine, divine at any moment's notice. Uh, so, so yeah. So, you know, focus me, bro. Is that is that some crazy stuff? I guess uh, another way to look at it is like, I could build divine in any given moment's notice. So I could go for a Hail Mary whenever I need to. But, I yeah, I... I guess it, it was a relic into a heart into a butterfly. I let's just say that if you don't upgrade a sacred relic, it's probably one of the worst items you could get in terms of go per damage ratio. There's a flame deck, flame initiation. I'm burning. I don't think he really cares. Here's the ancient apparition ice blast, burning half HP. He is gonna go down very very quickly. The ice blast is gonna do this job. Echo Sam's gonna do it. Brumada gets a double. He's right clicking like crazy. Lone DD very very low. It looks like the Fissure crevice blocking ROTK. RK is gonna set Sun down. It's gonna use the cheese. Use the cheese. He's gonna use the cheese. But will it be enough? He's critting like crazy. No more lives here. He's gonna go for TNK. TNK. He pops a Ghost Scepter, and now Lakets. Oh oh, four staff on your your. He's gonna have Enchant Totem. He's got no spell left, and that's why Aegis on the DK is absolutely useless. What did he actually accomplish after he came back alive? Oh, Enchant Totem, and uh, oh, he didn't even die there. He he will die now. Best use of Aegis on Shaker. Still no idea why it was a butterfly, and that Fissure Block definitely killed the Brood Mother more than it helped. And now the push goes the other way. Of course, the, these guys, I assume, has buyback. No, Viper does not have buyback. And that might just be the first racks of the game. Because Dragonite pushing, he is out of Dragon form. Although he's still right-click like an absolute beast. And he's going to back off. Are we going to go for the Roshan? Is Roshan spawning anytime soon? I think Dragonite at the very least could do some damage to the tower. Although against the Beastmaster and Crystal Maiden, who does have some stuns. Might be a little bit dangerous. Crystal Maiden going for Axe Scepter. And looks like the push is going to be coming in. Looks like uh, TNK TP's in. Reach of Travel. Drop off a of Kofi, because he doesn't know how his spells work. But the, re regardless, that is going to give them Rax. Yep. Rax number one goes on Myth Trust despite winning two big team fries. DK, what the hell are you doing? No buyback. Buy some butterfly. No divine. Aegis on the wrong target. Cheese on the wrong target. Although she's not too useful against Ancient Operation, but still, it's big enough. It's big. But uh, now DK on the back foot of things. This game is just showcasing both teams. Making some mistakes, but I guess that's why, you know, games are very exciting to watch. Zippo is uh, carry maiden now, not crystal maiden, because having a pipe makes you a very valid target. I mean, especially when you're dropping ultimates. This 20% slow, very decent, but Dragonite picks up the Aegis now. Um, good target. Actually, I, actually, I will actually give the cheese to Dragonite, to be honest. Because if you die with your dragon form on, you know, you don't come back alive with dragon form. Although, I mean... You have AC and Satanic and now an Aegis. Do, 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 do the Radiant team, doesn't even, do they even want to focus the Dragonite anymore? I think they just don't want to focus DK. Because even when he comes back, even in human form, he still hurts. He still hurts a lot. So we have Viper. He's alive now. He could, he could finally get the Divine. I don't know, man. He's fully decked out too. Even when he gets the divine, he can't go lifesteal anymore. Uh, I guess another thing you could do is you sell the sell the BKB and then buy a new one. 
It takes you 2k gold to do that, but it gives you a full 10 second charge on the BKB. This gem is still <laughs> just chilling. I don't think anyone remembers or knows. Blue Mother um, Daedalus is a decent choice, although against such a high armor hero, I think it's not too effective. But since the fact that she, she already has Incapitating Bite as an orb effect, you can't really get for like a Maelstrom or a Death Slayer, which is decent against Shaker, or excuse me, against Lakels in this case. Here we go, the team fight might be breaking out. Swap and a Hex on ROTK. Does he have buyback? I, uh, it's gonna be close. We'll see Echo Slam gets dropped here. And looks like this Viper's gotta do big work. Viper going on Lakes. He's life stealing back like crazy here. He does have the Aegis Steel Crystal Maiden drops a big ultimate. And that is gonna bring down Lakels. Yeah, Lakels is gonna go down. No more Dragon Form. They're gonna focus down very quickly on the Ventral Spear. Losing a lot of damage on the Aura. Viper is still alive somewhere. And it looks like Crystal Maiden is still alive. Puck is there as well. And I think that Viper is gonna go down. Does he have buyback? Yes, he does. He's gonna do it right now shaker drop off a nice stun here on two where's the buyback where's the buyback not enough for him the buyback short for like 10 gold 20 gold and that's gonna be the top racks as well myth trust is gonna do it right here with double melee racks still no divine it was it was never meant to have a divine and that swap initiation against rotk who also did not have buyback that was it out of positional play from the Chinese, I do not expect it. I did not expect it, but that's what we saw. Shaker, well, I definitely did not expect Shaker picking up the Aegis, but damn, this game making very little to no sense. And I guess, uh, you know, the fact that whenever you see a Crystal Maiden close to Aegis, the game just makes very little to no sense. Finally, Viper buys back, but uh, that would be a little bit too late. Uh, they might pick off the Dragonite. Oh, actually, if they do, man. If, oh, no, he pops the cheese. That, that was just sad. Oh, they might actually still bring him down. Satanic is up, so he can actually just go for a fight and Chan Totem being used. Frostbite, 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 Zippo, Zippo, no, no. no. That, that was sad. That was a, that's a Frostbite. That was late. It was cooling down. He could have brought it off. And the cats might actually still do a lot of damage. Dragon Tail stun. He's life stealing, burning. Not enough damage. He gets four staff away. He's gonna get picked off. That That's sick. That's sad and sick. And uh, Labad killing some cherry blossom trees. That's messed up. Dragon Eye gets. Dragon Eye is just too good. ROTK, you know, gets a ROTK trying to do some heroic. Where the hell is that Dragon Eye? Oh, he just poured it back. I was like, where, did, where was he in the team fight? I didn't see him. And I think that's gonna be GG. Dragon Eye ports back with the boot to travel. That's how stacked he is. I think I think that's myth trust. I think that's what TNK is doing. TNK is saying that I know that it doesn't actually help my teammate kill Raxus faster, but it's just um, it's for balance because it's just too good. Uh, my team is too good, so I actually have to balance it out. So he just basically gives his team minus attack speed. Uh, but yeah, that's the game. Wow, this this was a roller coaster of a ride. I was mid game myth trust was pony hard, and then I was like DK winning the two fight. They're pushing Raxus, and then. And then Shaker blocks off the Broodmother, and then the Aegis is wrong. I'm like, oh my goodness. This game is leaving my, my face in my hand, and, and it's not in a good way. So, but regardless, it was a very entertaining game throughout. We saw some beautiful farming from Viper. I guess that's why we don't we don't advocate farming Viper in my pub game. It, it, I guess even the highest level, it just doesn't work. Although it could have worked if we got better mid-game teamfight from Beastmaster. It could have worked if we have better Aegis and Cheese distribution. But yeah, overall, very well played from DK and Myth Trust. And if you guys want to keep following this uh, tournament that's ongoing on uh, Join Dota, check out the website for more information. Hope you guys enjoyed this game. As always, Luminous, signing off to you guys.